Welcome back, everybody. Well, Christmas may be over, but winter isn't going anywhere anytime <laughs> soon. So here to help us carry into the new year with a beautiful winter wreath is Orly. I love these. Isn't this it's fun? such a great idea. Yeah, you know what? The reason I love this so much is that I was looking around my house. I really, really did a lot of holiday decorations this year. And it's kind of sad when it gets to the point that you're like, I know. I don't put it all away. The trees and all the lights yeah. come down. I get depressed a little bit. And there's all this special just like sparkle and twinkle and warmth in your home when you decorate for the holidays. Mm. And it's kind of sad to just take it all away. It feels vacant. <laughs> so true. So I thought that it would be really fun to look around the house and see certain things that I used as decor and ways that I could transition them into something that's okay. a fall wreath. So I still have pretty decor, but I'm using things that I've already got around. So the little bottle brush trees and the pine cones so and the yarn and all of that uh, really works because I have them all around my house anyway. And it helps us continue to celebrate the season yeah, and exactly. kind of transition out of that. Keep so, the decor going. So we don't get depressed. So what yeah. do we need besides this, this wreath form? Yeah, right? so these are a uh, grapevine and you can okay. get the grapevines in large wreaths and you can cut them to size or you can buy pre-cut pre, pre -cut ones. Right. We're going to be using some pine cones here that you can see I've spray painted Cute. and glittered. These are the little bottle brush trees. Those are super fun. And then you just want different types of yarn. Things that feel kind of wintry, so white, gray, off-white, a little cream, different colors that sort of have that vibe, and also different textures. Okay. So that they don't all look and feel the, the exact same. You want different texture. All right. So how do and we we're doing it all with hot glue. With hot glue, that's hot it. Glue. Yeah, is yeah. That, what is that? This is Mod, Mod Podge, because I'm gonna show you how I added the glitter to right, the pine and some cones. some glitter, okay, let's get started. Yeah. So the first thing that you wanna do is cut your grapevine if you're buying the one that comes in the large roll to length. Okay. So you just cut a piece, and you can see, I just used a little bit of black wire to connect it, okay. because it was on one large roll. If you have a grapevine that's already you know, you buy it, store bought, this is, you can ignore this step. Right. Now what we wanna do is we're gonna not only, we're gonna wrap yarn around here and that's not only to cover it, but it also creates a much smoother surface when I actually am tying on each piece of ribbon. Okay. Because what happens is it's obviously kind of crunchy sure. in there, so when you're trying to tighten the ribbon, it makes it really difficult. So this part is actually one of the most tedious just because you just you've got keep, the full length of it and you need to kind of keep step working. step and repeat, step exactly. and repeat. As you so get, you can watch some Hallmark movies while 100%, you do this. 100%, 100%. So you would keep wrapping around, wrapping around. And basically, what you do is encase the entire thing and you can see, right? I would just go until I've reached the end. And you get it like and that. And you can see the end. Uh, let me just pop this little sucker okay. over here. Thank you. You can see the width that I created. All right. So now, in order to hang on the fringe, this is what you'll do. You'll cut multiple lengths in all your different fringe. And they don't need to be exact because it looks sort of pretty, as you can see, like when that. they kind of have an uneven. If it was blunt edge, it would sort of be a different vibe. So it's pretty that they dangle down. Sure. So uh, rough the same length, but not exact. It also sort of looks like a wreath meets a dream catcher. Totally. Right? Totally. I love it. Absolutely. So this is how you would do it. I'm going to open this up so you can see easily. Take your yarn and you're going to fold it in half like this and you're just going to create a slip knot. So pull it underneath. Easy. Just like that. You're going to open up this hole here, pull and tighten. And then it. it lays down. So when you've got some of these uh, smaller yarn, it actually is really pretty to do like a double instead of just one, because it will not only save you time, but it ends up, they cluster together, so you actually see the color a little right. more. So you can see once it pulls together, it actually creates four. It makes it look more expensive. Exactly, so just kind of take a step back and take a look at what you're doing, and make sure that you feel like you have balance with not only texture, but color. Yeah, I you love want it, this from is far, cream, that's exactly. white, that's a light gray. Yeah, and so when you look at these over here, you can see the gray actually starts to look almost like shadows, yeah. like depth, so you just want to make sure that you're kind of taking a step back from it and seeing that you've got some of this fuzzy, you've got the big blanket yarn, you've got a couple of thin ones, cream, so you have a really pretty balance from far away. And I noticed I like how you spray painted the, the grapevine a yeah. little bit. Yeah, so I thought Is that- it just flex snow? No, yeah, it's the like the spray snow yeah. stuff. Yeah, if you don't have spray snow, you can use white uh, spray paint, it's totally okay. fine. But I thought it would look cool that this is where the majority of our snow is. Right. So I did the most concentrated, and then you can see I basically went to nothing on the top. So it looked like it was kind of coming down and snowy on the bottom. Oh. So that's totally uh, your preference. I obviously did not do it here. They both look really cute, totally yeah. up to you. All right, so once this is done now, you can see we basically have all of our fringe attached and connected. Right. Now it's time to start building the trees. Our scenery. Isn't it really fun? Okay. It's really fun. I was really excited this morning. So I'm gonna start off with the biggest uh, bottle brush tree that I have. All right. And you put a little bit of hot glue on the bottom here. And one thing to remember is that you're gonna have a lot of little details, so you're able to disguise things. So if you notice that a little bit of hot glue sort of uh, comes out the bottom right there. Don't worry because we can we cover it with it. a pine cone. And you know, I will tell you, if I, I were to see this like hanging in a really fancy boutique, 
Uh, it, yeah. I would imagine it being very expensive. Yeah. I'm not kidding you. I and look you at know, that and I would think a lot of people would pay a lot of money for this. And this is done with virtually pennies. It's it's really inexpensive, especially because, like I said, we're using things that we have from our Christmas decorations, which makes it really easy. And I think that what makes this look more expensive is the colors you choose. Right. So if you, when it we comes down to adding all of the little glitter details, and I'll show you how we fix that right there. I'm going to let that guy You want him sideways? Down. No. So okay. the cool thing about this is that these bottle brush trees are on wire, so oh. you just straighten them. So oh even gosh. though his base is on an angle, from the front, you're not going to notice it because you can just straighten the trees however how you want. How great is that? So there we now have our trees. All right. Now, yeah, would you hold that? Actually, sure. that'd be great. So I want to show you how I did the pine cones and added this glitter because even on this large one, oh look how pretty goodness. that looks, right? Oh, my goodness. It's such... It's so beautiful. Even beautiful in a bowl of these yes. as decor. So take a brush. You don't have to use something as big as this. A small little brush will do. And you just want to tip the edges like this. Just add Mod Podge to the edges... And you don't need to go all the way around because you're really only going to see one side of the pine cone. Okay. So you can save yourself a little bit of time. Let me open this up. This is a really fine glitter. Whatever glitter you have at home is going to work. Now you just look at that, just like that. Oh. Just dust it on. I Do it like over so a trash much. can or over a little dish like this, so you can shake it and then you can save that glitter and put it back in. Could so you not put the glitter it. in the Mod Podge? You could, and then brush it on yeah. like that. Absolutely. Okay. Either one works. Okay, so now all we're going to do is start adding the little a couple cones. of pine cones. And this is where you kind of fill in the space. Like, take a look from the front, and you always want to look at it from the front because you're not going to see the back. So you want to make sure that you're kind of hiding anything that you don't like, filling well, in, because you don't want to see the base of these trees at all. You don't want to see that little white base. Well, I know right now that we're adding pine cones and our cute little trees and stuff, but if we had any sentimental or some of our favorite ornaments that we just yeah. didn't want to put back in the boxes yet, oh, I could actually you put them on? Yes, I love that idea. You you know, the tinier the ornaments, the easier they're going right. to be to work with, obviously, because you have more space. But if you wanted to make a really huge one of these sure. um, one of these wreaths as opposed to these smaller ones, you could totally do that. A really big wreath or would like, look think beautiful. about the little like Christmas village people. You know what I mean? Yeah. You could put all oh the my people. gosh, yes, it would be like so, so cute. Oh, yeah, so many absolutely. There's a million things okay. you could do. And really, as you can see, you just start adding it on, kind of taking a step back, looking at it, and that's it. The way and, and then the way you hang it yeah, is so, really easy. Just yeah, here you can uh, you can this is what we're gonna do just to, to show quickly. I cut a length of of uh, ribbon. And I'm going to put it around like this. I'm adding a teeny bit of hot glue to the top. When you do this, be careful because the ribbon is really thin and you don't want to uh, get your fingers. So kind of let it, don't like push it too much. Okay. You and don't we all have yourself. so much leftover ribbon from the holidays exactly. right now. Exactly. So now you would hide the seam that all I right. created right here. I would tie another bow in the front. The bow was, I just hot glued a bow onto the front. And I'm going to come back to the heroes here, the ones on the wall, so that you can see the way they look. I thought you had tied a perfect bow, so you did it that way. No, what a great this idea. is just attached. This little bow I just hot glued right here. And if you look right up here, the way that this is able to stay flat. around like this and flat is, look, it's just a little thumbtack. Oh, or so like. you thumbtack it through so you really can hang it anywhere because it's not going to leave a big hole. You don't need a big nail or a hook. You just thumbtack it, and now it creates that really clean line so that it's not, like, smushed at all like that. It and creates it, a really smooth shape. Would it really be so wrong to leave these hanging all year long? I don't think so. I don't think so. Debbie. If it's wrong, I don't want to be right, Shani. <laughs> I do not want to be yeah, right. You guys go to hallmarkchannel.com <laughs> for full instructions on how to make these. And stick around because next up, we are sharing the different ways that our family is giving back all year long. Come on back, everyone. I mean,